Hi and welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson we're going to do a calculator example. So let's jump into it. So a calculator that needs to do addition minus multiply and division. So or in better words subtraction. Addition subtraction multiplication and division. So let's keep it as simple just to make the output quicker. So add, sub, multiply, and division. And if we don't want to continue, we want to press 5 to exit. So the user is going to make a choice. Let's say, for instance, 2. He needs to enter the number 1 and the number 2. And then the actual calculation must be, must be shown. So number 2 was subtraction. So 12 minus 7 gives us 5. And then this needs to be repeated. So again, must this be asked 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 until the user selects the choice of 5. So this must be displayed to the user. The user needs to make a choice. If he doesn't make 1 to 4 and he makes the choice of 5, the program ends. But if he chooses 1 to 4, he needs to continue with the program. So this menu will be redisplayed until the user presses the input of 5. So let's see how to do this. So let's start with the basics. So first of all, before we can continue, we first do our include, include std io.h then we continue with our main function okay after this we need to save we always need to build and run before we start with any logic just to see that everything compiles perfectly and that everything works so now that we know that this is perfect we can actually start so first thing things first there is a looping structure that is perfect for menu-driven options to repeat a menu over and over until the user presses a certain number or exits. So, a looping structure that always repeats the body at least once. And this looping structure we call a do-while statement. The do-while statement is different from the while statement in the sense that the while statement first looks at the condition and then if this condition is true goes into the body and do the body and then goes back to the condition whereas the do while statement first do everything in the body and then look at the condition and this then gives us the ability to always do the body at least once so a do while statement is very very nice to work with when we need to do menu driven stuff because a menu driven program needs to show the menu at least once to the user that's quite obvious so a do while so let's go in and do a do while so a do while starts with do and then we have our condition <coughs> sorry so we have do and we have while our condition so this is the basic structure for the do while statement now inside this before, before we're going to do actually the condition for the do while statement let's first do the output to the user so first of all we're gonna say calculator application okay new line new line and then oh we don't need to repeat this let's put this at the front okay so we're gonna say print if one for add new line and I'm just going to copy and paste this because we're going to do this a few times. 
So one, two, three, four, and five. Five is exit. Four is division, multiplication, and subtraction. Okay. So we're going to give this user um, options to the user. And thereafter, we need to tell the user to make a choice. Okay. After we have displayed the choice, we need to actually go and obtain the output from the command prompt by using scan if percentage d and percent so if we use scan if we safely assume that we need to have a variable to store that value somewhere so we're going to have an int choice variable so let's go down choice double click on choice just to see that it highlights the variable that we defined just to make sure that we spelled everything correctly now that we know this so if the user selects one it, it actually does addition two subtraction three four five for exit so we need to repeat this menu and the, with the calculations each and every time until the user presses five so this we can then assume that we need to repeat this until the choice is unequal or equal to five so we need to repeat this while choice is unequal to five and so that will be a while statement condition so while choice is unequal to five great so now that we know our condition is there in place and we can repeat this let's quickly see we save and we build and run Okay, so we've got our display, calculated application, one for add, sub, multiplication, division, exit. So if you press one, it's going to repeat, two is going to repeat, three is going to repeat, four, five, it stops. Great, so now we know that our condition for the while statement actually works. <coughs> Sorry for that. So now let's continue. Now that we know, let's just make this bigger. Now that we know that when the user selects one, two, three, or four, we need to do a certain thing. So we need to determine if the user pressed one, two, three, or four. So if we need to determine if the user um, selected one, two, three, or four, we need a decision structure. And something that repeats like one, two, three, four, that's iteratively. A switch case is very handy to use. So, a switch case. We're going to use a switch case to determine if the user pressed 1, 2, 3, or 4. And we're going to switch the choice variable. Okay. So, our switch case. So, we're going to say in case, in case choice is equal to 1, we're going to do something. I like to indent my case always and we can continue case 3 and case 4 great so this is our switch case okay so we always know, know that it needs to break each and every time Okay, so now after the choice has been made, we need to see if the user pressed 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if he presses 5, it will exit. But now there's also another choice that the user could have made, and that's the invalid input. So invalid input meaning that the user didn't say 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Maybe the user entered 7. What then? We need to give feedback to the user if he did something wrong. So, with the switch case, it's quite nice to have this functionality. One, two, three, and four, we know. Five, we know is this. Okay. 
okay break again and if it's a five we can say something like C or let's say bye bye see you soon soon okay so you know that that's going to be the end of the application but with the case there's the extra added functionality of default meaning anything other than one two three four five and this is going to be our invalid sorry input okay and we're gonna give this feedback to the user to make this program better okay so now that we know that we have five that's going to exit everything else other than one two three four and five is invalid input and now we can just focus on one two three and four so one two three and four so we need to ask the user to actually input a number one okay and the user also needs to input a number two and there after after each time we ask the user something we need to scan if okay and if we have scan if we need variables so we can create an input one and input two variables okay and we're gonna say percentage d and percent input one and the same for the second percentage d input two Okay, so that's our first printf and scanf and the second printf and scanf to get input 1 and input 2. Thereafter, we can actually go and do the calculation for 1 and 1 is addition. And that's quite easy. What we can do is we can do everything in line. Don't have to create a extra variable for this. We can just say percentage %d plus percentage d is equal to percentage d so this is going to be the first number one number two and then the answer and how we do this is we're going to say input one input two and then input one plus input two and doing all this in line helps us to minimize the program with one fewer variable so let's see we build and run before we continue with the rest of the program so we know that exit will work we press 5 it says bye bye see you soon okay we can build and run again okay let's say we say 8 that's invalid input it asks us again so now we can press 1 it's going to ask us for number one two and four and it's going to say two plus four gives us 61 point add okay so it's actually two plus four gives us six and then it repeats the uh, menu so we just need to have a new line after there so great so now we know that everything works perfectly so what we can do is we can copy and paste this always 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 be careful ladies and gentlemen when you copy and paste i have made quite a few mistakes in my coding career with copy and paste that caused me a few hours of immense struggle and frustration so always be very careful in copy and pasting so case two will be subtraction so we can subtract input one and two from each other okay and we can continue great case three is multiplication we can save this 
and we can add another for division now ladies and gentlemen always always be careful of division because integer division let's say this is 4 and this is 2 4 divided by 2 gives us 2 because 2 goes twice into a the value of 4 but let's say it was 5 divided by 2 integer division will then only give us the answer of 2 because 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 but it's all integers so we throw away everything after the comma so we always need to make sure that we're going to print out a percentage f meaning a floating value that has a comma we're going to limit it to two values after the comma and we need to force this by cast this to a floating value so we're forcing input one typecasting it to a float value so when we do a float divided by an integer we get a floating value because float is a higher order and then the answer will be float let's save this we build and run and let's see how our program responds to this changes so one is two plus four gives us six if you press two for division we can say 4 minus 3 gives us 1. Let's continue. Multiplication. 2 times 2 gives us 4. And then lastly, 4. 5 divided by 2 gives us 2.5. If you press 7, that's invalid input. 5 to exit and it says bye-bye. See you soon. Okay, so great. Let's quickly just recap. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and go to the top and let's go through our program. First of all, we have three variables. Choice variable, input 1 and input 2 variable. Then we have our choices that we have made known to the user. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. But we haven't made the invalid input choices available. But we can assume that the user will make a mistake sometimes. Then we ask for a choice. The user makes a choice. Either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or invalid. We use a switch case to determine if the user pressed or input 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 into the program. So 1, we're going to do addition. 2, we're going to do subtraction. 3, we're going to do multiplication for division remember when we do division if we do division with integers there may be a comma value and if it's only integers the answer will be integer so the comma value will be thrown away so we need to type cast this to a float and you can also limit the amount of um, values after the comma then case it's a five we say bye bye see you soon just to give the user some feedback that he has successfully exit this program and then if the user did something wrong we can use the default functionality of the switch case to give the user a response of invalid input and after that the program ends successfully and there you have it ladies and gentlemen this is our calculator application by using a do while statement to repeat the menu and give the user the ability to go through a lot of phases until he or she chooses to exit the program. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.